Okay, great. Well, why don't we get started so people who are here can get uh, stay on schedule. Um, Andrew, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Um, you know, scaling connectivity is one of those issues that I don't think comes to people's mind first when they think about all the different challenges of running a micro-mobility business, but it's actually uh, essential and vital to the operations of a micro-mobility business, uh, knowing where these vehicles are, being able to provide updates for them, um, all these things that connectivity enables us to, to do um, that I think creates a lot of challenges for entrepreneurs in the industry. Um, and, you know, I know what you've worked on uh, as, you know, at, at, uh, at your company um, is really trying to help address this. I know you've got a really interesting case study to share from Ampler Bikes, which I was just hyping up. It's a really cool bike company from Estonia that you should check out also. Um, so I think today you're here to tell us a little bit about sort of your experience there and what the rest of us can learn from it. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Andrew Worth, the U.S. Country Manager at 10T. Uh, and I'll be covering today's presentation. Uh, originally, we were going to be joined by the CPO of Ampler Bikes and do this as a joint case study. But uh, due to some unforeseen circumstances, uh, I'll be covering the presentation myself today. Uh, so to give you a little background, 10T's primary customer base and our expertise has always been in the micromobility industry. Um, and that's why today we're bringing you this uh, most recent case study with Ampler Bikes focused on uh, our learnings and the key takeaways of implementing uh, 10T's global connectivity solution for their second generation of smart e-bikes. So micromobility has had an incredible run over the last couple of years, um, but in the last year, there's been some worrying news about the viability of the business models. Uh, and now many experts are even emphasizing that for 2023, it's not just about having the latest and greatest technology in the in the device, in the bike, um, but about simplification, streamlining, and focusing on profitability. So that's why today we're going to show you how uh, the e-bike manufacturer Ampler uh, launched their second generation of smart e-bikes in the spring of 2022. And before this launch, uh, actually 10T and Ampler worked very closely together to select the best hardware, test through different cellular modules, and we helped advise on everything from implementation all the way through to manufacturing. So we have a lot to share, and these real-world insights are a great opportunity to show how connectivity plays a crucial role in the launch of e-bikes and uh, their efficient operation. So to better understand this whole story, um, you need to know the parties involved. So uh, 10T is a global connectivity provider who has already connected uh, 1.4 million devices in 173 countries. Uh, we're front runners in the world of eSIM and in the IoT space. So we place a great emphasis on developing user-friendly software and both our eSIM infrastructure and our connectivity management platform are designed from the ground up for IoT enterprises. And Ampler is an award-winning e-bike manufacturer whose bikes uh, have been used by over 23,000 happy riders every day and they've been building lightweight electric bikes since 2016. So let's get into the project a little bit. Um, a lot happens behind the scenes when you think about a customer's experience with a smart e-bike or any other smart vehicle. Um, once you add in the manufacturing details, the logistics, uh, things like that, it can get even more complicated. And at 10T, we believe that cellular connectivity can be both an enabler um, and help scale a cost-effective operation, especially when you have uh, collaborative partnerships uh, between all the parties involved. And if we boil down some of these complexities, we have, roughly speaking, three phases in the life cycle of a smart device uh, when it comes to its connectivity. So in the case of the bikes, you know, we have the manufacturing of the bikes. Um, that's phase one. The second phase would be the bikes when they're uh, in the store um, or they're in storage or in the store waiting for a customer. And then the third phase would be the bikes after they've been purchased and they're now with the customer and they're in use. So we're gonna run through all three of these phases um, with this case study. So let's start from that first phase, um, the production of the bike. And it's commonly believed that uh, for the connectivity aspect, it's just a matter of attaching the SIM to, uh, to your module and away you go. And actually, you know, to set yourself up for success, uh, there's a, a couple of key links here, which the main one being you need to know exactly which SIM is in which bike. And 
this sounds very logical, but you'd be surprised how many times this step is overlooked. Um, and it, it causes a lot of chaos down the line. So if you or your manufacturing partner uh, can't do this or are struggling with how to kind of streamline that manufacturing process and keeping everything in sync where, you know, which sim is in which bike is in which country and that kind of thing. Uh, one OT can help by uh, automatically detecting the IMEI of your, of your device to help establish that pairing. So you know exactly which sim is in which bike. The second important part of this phase is the connectivity testing um, at the end of the production line. And this ensures everything's working properly before you finish the production and ship that bike. Um, instead of just activating the sims, which would then start your recurring connectivity costs, um, and then you'd have costs running even while the bikes are in storage, uh, 1OT provides a free test status. And this allows you to perform all the necessary testing as you finish your production. Then when this test is complete, the sim is automatically put offline from a billing perspective. So you ran your test, um, sim goes offline, and you don't have any more uh, cost accumulation while you know, you're know you shipping those, those bikes around the world, putting them in uh, warehouses, and getting them ready to be sold at stores. Now also, with these connectivity tests, this is a good uh, place where you can do all of your you know um, testing, where basically, if a test should fail, we have uh, an easy to use connectivity management platform that comes in handy in the troubleshooting and allows you to, uh, to figure out what's going on with your connectivity and really dig into those problems as they appear, as opposed to after you've already done uh, your manufacturing process. So with Ampler, uh, 1OT worked very closely with Ampler's uh, technology partner, Crackle, and their CEO, Christian uh, Tozen, stated uh, the following, when we asked him about how that project had gone. And he said, uh, throughout the R&D process, Crackwell and 1OT worked hard uh, hand in hand to find the best possible solutions for Ampler. Using their platform features, we managed to control all the IoT nodes in the field, their network activity and data usage. So you can see not just how our platform is very useful, but also how strong collaboration between all the partners really strengthened this project. Uh, as you can see, it wasn't just a matter of 1OT's background and expertise in this. It wasn't just Ampler, and it wasn't just Crackwell. It was the three of us all working together to really get everything across that finish line. So now we're getting into phase two. Um, the bikes have been manufactured. You've done that, that end-of-line testing, um, and now you've started shipping them to stores, uh, or maybe... You're, you're waiting for the uh, season to start because uh, it's a little cold uh, where, you're, where you're doing your deployments. The point is, is that you don't know when a particular bike is going to be sold or, or needs to be active. So to optimize the cost here, you would probably want to put that SIM offline. The, the problem comes in, though, if the SIM is offline uh, and you have that first touch point with a customer, uh, it may not be so streamlined because there's not connectivity in place. So we all know that first experiences are everything, and that beginning must be very smooth and streamlined, uh, and activation needs to work right out of the box. So that's why 1OT is suggesting an active ready mode. It's sort of in between the uh, offline mode and fully active mode. It's free of charge, and it means that the SIM is waiting for an initial input to kind of fully activate and connect to the internet. This allows you to have things um, kind of sitting in a ready state. Uh, so when customers do pick up the bike, uh, they can just go and connect right away. Streamlines everything from the uh, user perspective, but also it optimizes your costs on the uh, back end perspective because you're not paying to have a SIM running, uh, you know, fully running for a year maybe uh, while you're waiting for that to be sold. So Hans Lahr, the co-founder and CPO of Ampler Bikes, uh, commented the following um, when we were discussing this case. Uh, During the very difficult times in the supply chain of 2022, the various shipping and standby modes offered for the SIMS by 1OT enabled us to have a good runway to get the production rolling with more flexible capacity and deadlines. And again, this, this is going back to the um, partnership and collaboration side of things. So without talking through all the implementation and, and all the issues that could arise, um, it's very difficult to know if different SIM states, different, you know, pre-activation, active ready, those kinds of modes 
are needed. So what we really see is the key thing is uh, open collaboration. We're doing these projects together um, and we're not trying to uh, make things more challenging than they need to be. Okay, so now we're going into the third phase. So you've done your manufacturing, the bikes were shipped to the store, um, they were purchased by a customer and now they're being actively used. So now that the customer has the bike and has started using it, you need to make sure everything is working as you planned and you tested and you did your R&D for. So for example, Ampler had planned uh, that each bike would consume about two to three megabytes a month. Uh, thanks to the uh, reporting and monitoring tools in our platform, they actually detected that uh, some of the bikes were consuming four to times, four to five times more than what was expected. So quick reactions and uh, over-the-air firmware updates help solve this issue without hurting their bottom line. And uh, also, in, in their case, they were able to do that without the customers even knowing about it or having to bring the bike in for servicing. Um, and that, again, is collaboration, communication between the partners, and also um, using a connectivity management platform that allows you to have things like uh, alerts when you're you know, doing five times the data consumption that you planned. Um, and we find that you know, those kinds of features really go a long way in uh, optimizing the cost when you're doing large scale deployments. So those were just a few examples of how arranging cellular connectivity is not just about tossing the SIM card into the bike and, and thinking everything is set. Um, and I, I've mentioned it a few times, but you know, one of the most fundamental aspects of a successful launch and efficient operations even after the initial launch is the communication between partners and the previous experience of all those partners. So even before the first bikes were manufactured, 102's sales team and technical engineers worked closely on the prototypes with Ampler's engineering team. And um, we have a quote here from uh, Carl Kosk, the product manager at Ampler Bikes. And um, he described how 10T provided very valuable insight into testing the devices and input on technologies and processes from their experience, which enabled us to avoid many issues before launching our bike. And this goes back to the collaboration. Um, these projects are, are a team effort and oftentimes in that team, especially when you have multiple companies working together, somebody's done pieces of that before. And there's not necessarily a need to reinvent the wheel uh, if, if people you're working with have experience in that field. So the main learnings uh, from this project, uh, I think can be categorized into two main themes. Uh, firstly, solid partnerships and collaboration as a backbone uh, if you can't trust each other and trust your partners, you're not going to launch a very uh, successful product at the end. You might be able to get it out there, but the long-term uh, support and keeping everything working is going to suffer. So definitely uh, collaboration and, and all that is a backbone in any project. And secondly, um, global connectivity as an enabler for a successful smart device launch. And we'll go into a little bit more um, how all of how these two things you know really helped the successful uh, launch for Ampler. So, firstly, you know on the partnership and collaboration side, um, we've already been hinting at it throughout this presentation that there's many different parties involved in one project. So, so far for the Ampler case, we've talked about Ampler, 10T, Crackwool, uh, and Incap. So, there's all sorts of different companies involved and. We learned that working closely together and aligning on the goals between all the different parties uh, massively simplifies the launch, especially when it's on a large scale. That way, each team knows its responsibilities and points of contact. And uh, Adi Rahula, the uh, SMD and process manager at INCAP, uh, which is the fastest growing EMS in Europe in 2022, said the following about the collaboration with 10T for Ampler's project. As the time to market is often very short with projects like this, great communication between the EMS and the connectivity provider is crucial. Any discrepancy could potentially lead to device downtime, creating a loss in revenue. 102 was always there to come up with quick solutions and the communication was never an issue. So it, it sounds very uh, you know, obvious to say, always collaborate, always talk with your partners, always you know, try to work together, but 
very often that is a, a, a key step that is missing in a lot of partnerships. And so um, that's why we emphasize that so heavily um, in how 1OT approaches product projects with customers. The second key element is um, in the micro mobility space is that everyone needs to be agile and respond quickly to new opportunities, regulatory changes, and everything in between. So a flexible global connectivity partner is a must. So implementing a global connectivity solution ensures that the manufactured bikes can be used anywhere in the world without losing their connection. It also makes it easier to expand into new markets as you can be sure that the device you manufacture will work worldwide. In addition, quick troubleshooting, firmware updates, and other actions through a connectivity management platform or through its API greatly simplifies the daily operations of a micromobility company. So all in all, our, in our experience, the recipe for success, um, there's a straightforward formula for a successful launch. And from 1OT's side, it's flexible cellular connectivity, global coverage, and a state-of-the-art connectivity management platform. All of that combined with open collaboration leads to streamlined operations, cost efficiencies, and a fantastic customer experience. So thank you all for tuning in. I hope that the key takeaways from our experience were uh, as useful for you as they were for us. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions right now. And you can always reach out to me directly at my email that's on the screen here. And uh, lastly, thank you for joining us today. Great job. Thank you so much, Andrew. That was really, really a great presentation. I feel like I learned so much uh, in such a short amount of time in a micro mobility, micro workshop that was really condensed with really helpful information. I guess one question that came up to me as we were chatting was, you know, you're the country manager for 1OT in the US, you know, as kind of an industry specialist, like where do you see connectivity trends going next? Like where's, where's the market moving towards organically? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I definitely see a, a greater move towards eSIM adoption and uh, the flexibility it provides. So, you know, one of the in the connectivity space, one of the key issues is always <clears throat> has always been uh, being tethered to a single telecom, um, which greatly limits, you know, connectivity when you're doing global deployments, especially. So uh, the move towards eSIM is really opening up the flexibility. And uh, yeah, 1OT is definitely leading the market in this regard um, with our eSIM. And then another question off that is like, we think like, I don't know. So I see the opportunity, right? But like, what are sort of the main blockers for launching IoT products at scale globally, like that you see right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's definitely um, to do with the hardware and, and compatibility between hardware and um, well, currently given the supply chain, the sourcing of components. Um, you know, for from our perspective on the connectivity side. Um, for launching at a global scale, that's that's pretty much been solved. There's a global connectivity, there's roaming agreements in place. Um, you can have a global presence and connectivity is not the blocker there, but having the right um, modules, the right hardware that that works all together, um, that can be a blocker. And, and usually in that R&D phase and the kind of the prototype proof of concept phase in the beginning, that's where a lot of the time and energy gets sunk into to really get that tuned and get that right. Uh, Nathan, I think you're on mute. Pardon me. Best practices sometimes get in your foot. Um, so it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you for the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, you know, I see you've got your email address up there. People can reach you. I assume also LinkedIn, Twitter, anything else you want to leave for people? Email's um, best. Yeah, just, just my LinkedIn. Um, it's, if you search that same name, Andrew Worth, uh, in LinkedIn with, with 1OT there, I'll definitely show up. Um, and yeah, shoot me a message or, um, shoot me an email and, um, Happy to answer any questions or to uh, to chat. Excellent. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, join us over in the Sessions tab for more great content. Also, Kara Swisher's on stage right now, so we can chat with her, too. Um, thanks, and hopefully hang out more. And you'll reach out to Andrew if you have any questions. Andrew, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right, bye, guys.